For this question, I'm asked to find the work done by this given vector field f along our curve c. And c is the curve that traces out a square with vertices 0, 0, pi 0, 0 pi, and pi pi, and it's oriented counterclockwise. So to find the work done by our vector field, I want to take a line integral of it around the curve c. And since c is closed, its start and its end point are the same, I can use Green's theorem. And Green's theorem is integrating the two-dimensional curl of f over the region that the curve C encloses. So this region R. And I need the two-dimensional curl of F to do that. So let's go ahead and do that first. Two-dimensional curl is the partial derivative with respect to X of the second component of the vector field minus the partial derivative with respect to Y of the first component of the vector field. I'm going to write that out. Then let's take those partial derivatives. Okay, and just taking a look at the first term, I want to differentiate p sine of x with respect to x, so I'm going to get p cosine of x. And then q sine of y is going to be treated like a constant, so the partial derivative of that with respect to x is going to be 0. And then for the second term, likewise, when I'm differentiating a cosine x, that's treated like a constant when differentiating with respect to y, so that's going to be 0. And then b cosine of y differentiates to negative b sine of y. And since I'm subtracting that, those two negatives cancel out, and I add b sine of y. OK, now I want to integrate this over that region r. And let's take a look at r so we can find some bounds of integration. Well, I've got a square, and it looks like if I look across, x goes from 0 to pi, and likewise up for y. So my bounds of integration for both x and y are from 0 to pi. So it doesn't matter which order I integrate in, but I'm just going to go ahead and do y first and then x. Okay, let's differentiate, excuse me, integrate with respect to y. So p cosine of x is going to be treated like a constant, so when I integrate I get p y cosine of x. And then for b sine of y, when I integrate, I get negative b cosine of y. And I'm going to evaluate that from y equals 0 to y equals pi. So let's go ahead and plug in. Everywhere I see a y, let's put a pi. Now let's go ahead and plug in a 0 everywhere I see y. So this first term here becomes 0, and then for the second term I've got negative b times the cosine of 0. Now let's go ahead and evaluate all of these things. So p pi sine of x stays as is. I can substitute um, a negative 1 for cosine of pi. So here I've got plus b. And then over here, cosine of 0 is 1. So I'm adding another b. So I've got p pi cosine of x plus 2b. Now let's integrate with respect to x. Well, p and pi are treated like a constant, so when I integrate cosine of x, I'm going to get sine of x. And 2b is also like a constant, so when I integrate, I'm going to get 2bx. And I'm going to evaluate from x equals 0 to x equals pi. So let's plug in a pi everywhere I see an x.
And now that I've got the first term, let's go and plug in everywhere that I see a zero. Yeah, plug in a zero everywhere I see an x. Okay, now let's just go and evaluate these. Sine of pi is going to be zero, so this term cancels out. Sine of zero is also zero, so this term cancels out. And obviously 2b times zero is just going to be zero. So all I'm left with is 2b pi. And let's say f is in newtons, x and y are in meters. So the work done by f along c is 2b pi joules.